I'll turn on. <clears throat> so let's start. Uh, memory disorders, that's the topic for today. I hope you can see it well. So, first of all, a memory disorders. Before we talk about the, the disorder of memory, we will talk a bit about uh, the general and introduction about what is memory, what types of memory exist, and uh, uh, which uh, brain structures are responsible for each type of memory. That will help you to understand better the uh, features uh, of impairments of memory. Uh, and also, it will help you to memorize <coughs> better the topic for today. So, memory, that's a process of our collecting and keeping and retrieving of information. That's obvious. <coughs> and let me remind you what kind of memories we have. We have three types. Sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Here you can see the short description and the um, basic description of a sensory memory. <coughs> sensory memory. Let me tell you that uh, sensory memory is a flow of information from outside. Uh, and this flow includes, first of all, uh, information contact with the receptors, stimulus contact with the receptors, and then they turn into the information, into the electric signal, and then they move to uh, central nervous system, by, uh, uh, they move uh, through the nervous fibers and uh, the bus, let's say bus stop of this information is a thalamus. In thalamus, sensory memory is being finished. So then, then information after uh, thalamus, it goes uh, to the uh, cortex particularly to our brain, and also some of information goes down for the direct reaction, for example, uh, for the direct reaction for these incoming stimuli, for example, if you can see the snake, uh, there is no time to think, you have to pop up back yourself from these snakes, or you have to jump from it or do something to protect yourself and there is no time to think how, when, what is that, is it a snake or not, what it looks like, you have to read. But now we're interested in all the sensory information which go to the brain. As you see, sensory memory is the first selection attention C. What does it mean? Not all the stimulus which contact, which initiate, which make our receptors excitated, not all these informations goes to the thalamus. Or uh, maybe these informations will enter to the thalamus, but there will be a filter, filtering of this information, and we can see only, or we can percept only main things. It's a first filter. Otherwise, if we would uh, analyze, or if we would proceed all the incoming stimulus that would be so many uh, that would require so many gigabytes of uh, memory functioning so we have to be um, we have to economize our memory and we have to economize our energy so it's a first filter we see only important things for example if i look at the window well i can see my car and actually, I, I see other cars, but I don't care about them. And I don't register the number of uh, car num uh, the number of the uh, legislation in them, the names, or there may be some labels. Well, I don't see all the details. Actually, I can see them, but my sensory memory gives only what is necessary for me. It's a first bit. Second bus stop of the information uh, flow, it's a short-term memory. Other names for it is a walking memory. As you see, the length of the memory, uh, timing for this memory, it's about, uh, it's about 20 seconds. And 
why do we need this memory? Why do we call it short-term memory? Not because, of course, it's continuation. Um, yes, we, yes, we call it like this because of the continuation, but the main mission of this type of memory is another. It's, as you see, it aids to update your surroundings, uh, information about your surroundings. Uh, imagine yourself. Uh, why do well right now, for example, I'm been using my short term memory. Uh, I can see, uh, I, I remember what I was uh, uh, talking to you, what, what was it, what I was telling to you a few seconds ago. I remember our topic. Uh, well, uh, I um, right now, for example, I retrieve into my memory something from my old experience, some knowledge is about memory. So, right now. I use information, and this information I keep in my short-term memory. So it's an information which I right now actively processing, which right now I use in my thinking, which right now is necessary for me to achieve my goals for 20 seconds. And then I move in a time for the next second, the next one, next minutes, next hour. I will forget it because I don't need it. I will have another material in my short term memory. So to operate, that's why we need it. And now like in a computer, it's a RAM memory, random access memory. All the memory, all the information, uh, which is being used right now by the running program at that point. So in your computer, some programs are being uh, are activated and they use this short-term memory on the computer. Uh, actually, it does the same. And you see, anatomical structure responsible for that is a hypocampus. So you, you can see easily that if we will damage hypocampus, structure is the hypocampus. If we're going to damage hypocampus, the short-term memory will be unavailable. A person would remember only what was in the past, but he don't remember what going on right now. And in the future, he's not going to retrieve you any information uh, which happens after a damage of a hypocampus. There are a number of uh, people. Uh, who, for example, was uh, an object for the surgery, uh, surgery at the hippocampus. Uh, and uh, this guy uh, is a, actually a famous person because he was suffering from uh, that, uh, not suffering, he, every day was a new day for him. And uh, he remember everything until 18, I think, years old, <clears throat> what happens in his life. After that, he don't remember almost nothing because his hippocampus was damaged. And hippocampus is responsible for, let's remind you, first of all, to take in the incoming information and then to process it and to send it to the long memory for, to keep it for all our life. That's a short-term memory. Uh, so it's a just a look it's just a step on the way and then long term memory a long term memory it's a wait a second long term memory as you see long term memory encode information and put it for a continuous all the live storage and it looks like it endless first of all and the capacity uh, theoretically have no limits of the memory you will be maybe surprised but all the things that you cannot remember looks like you don't want to remember actually if you want to remember uh, things they will go to your brain actually to be more correct that information which your brain 
would like to keep for all his or his life, it will be saved. But the information which you want to keep in your brain, that maybe your brain do not want it. For example, you force yourself to do something with what you don't like. That information can, uh, can be wasted. Or majority of this information can be wasted. The conclusion is you shouldn't force yourself. Well, as you see, a long-term memory use encoding, and it can be intentional or specific. For example, uh, then you memorize something voluntary, uh, then you study, then you try to, when you think, yes, I have to know that, I will need to retrieve that later, so I train myself to put it in my memory. And the general memory or unintentional memory, or also we call it, automatic memory as you see it's the items which are memorized between somewhere during any kinds of process but you put them unintentionally in your memory for example yesterday uh, yesterday you uh, i think you were traveling not traveling just uh, leaving your home to do something or to go somewhere. So I don't think that you made an intentional task for yourself to remember what kind of transportation you had used. No. But if I ask you what kind of transport you used it yesterday, you will answer me what was it. That was saved by general memory or by unintentional memory. And actually this memory works more effectively than intentional memory. So if you want to memorize something or improve your memory, for example, uh, again, in medicine, uh, well, you, get, you have usually a short, short so-called conspect, short essence from the topic, like from the pharmacology. It's a few words, something like that. So, and you have to memorize that, and you try to force yourself to memorize all the elements. Yes, you use intention for specific memory. But if you would, after that or before that, if you would read all the article at the pharmacology, and if you would try to understand what is this article about, what it includes, uh, so you will unintentionally repeat on rehearse all the terms which in this article. So additional information, uh, the solving of a task usually, but usually always help you to improve your memory. Uh, well now, uh, how does our memories go? Uh, how do we keep our memory? And you see, that, that's the picture. I'll try to make... Oh, oh. Yeah. And uh, we got a processing of memory. Yes, a little bit. Yeah. And let's put the screen down. Okay. So now uh, we car currently we use uh, uh, construction of a memory as uh, the memory it is nothing just a processing system of the information so external event any kind of external event can go to your eyes yes that's that's uh, i will make an eye for you draw an eye for you so this information goes to the to an eye yeah and we now we use sensory memory. As you see, from sensory memory there is an encoding. Visual signal turns into electric signal. And then this information already goes to the walking or short term memory. Here, uh, let's, let's, let's draw me a snake. Wow, it looks like a reel, almost. 
So that's a snake, you can see the information, okay? And that information go, goes in a working short-term memory and then you remember it's a snake in a long-term memory. That's it. So what are we, why do we need that again to react? From walking or short-term memory signal goes directly to the spinal cord, CK, for the particular reaction. Some of, of information we put in our short-term memory by the unconscious process. It goes directly into our memory without analyzing. And what is this information? Very important information for actually for the family, for, for, for your own family and for the family of the patient you have to remember. For example, then children observe, just observe how, for example, pa father being uh, aggressive uh, emotionally, verbally or physically for the wife. Uh, they can be just observer, they can just stay in a neighbor room, but if they present somehow, these informations go into the brain. It's a, these violence go into the brain. So they remember fear, they remember violence, and unfortunately, they also remember skills. Skills how to be aggressive, how to torture other person, and uh, also skills how to be a victim. So it's harmless for both children, for both uh, for future for boys who are gonna be a future husband and for girls uh, who are gonna be a future wives. Boys will learn automatically, will put in their short-term memory the information that's that is normal to be aggressive, and girls will retrieve the information that's that's also it is normal to be a victim. You have to. Just wait until aggressor will be will come down, but that is not recommended at all. Now, main type of encoding: visual, acoustic, semantic. That's a type. Uh, that's three types. How do we keep in which? How do we keep information in our brain? In which form? in uh, which appearance we keep it. So we can keep it as a visual object. It's a visual encoding. Uh, the schema, the, the schema, the picture of the textbooks or any kinds of that. Events. Acoustic. It's a memory uh, which we keep as the sounds. For example, terms. Like hypothermia. We keep it as the sound signal, uh, as, uh, as the, uh, the sound, the combination of the sounds. Semantic, and you see that it's most effective and accurate. Here you can see the schema, I hope you remember it. Uh, you see the effectiveness, the percentage of, uh, of the recognizing of the words. If a person will just read them, and next time they will show him after, after five minutes, after 10 minutes, we will show him, uh, ask, show him the a list and he have to mark the words he can recognize. He will, you see, he will retrieve only 10 persons of these words. If we pronounce these words, like, so we stimulate his acoustic memory, acoustic encoding. Um, you see that will be effect will be much more stable. And if we, well, for example, if we or he during the first stage, then he try to memorize these words. Uh, if he in that time we invent some story and introduce these words into the story or if he would try to remember the terms and you will explain him these terms he will retrieve you this information much more effectively because he will use semantic memory it's a memory 
for the meaning, for the sense of events, of an object, of a person, something like that. Most effective and most long time existing. And now a few words about damage, about pathology in terms of uh, types of memory connected. Long-term memory, you see, is resilient for the acute attack, like brain hemorrhage, intoxication, uh, acute hypoxia. Uh, Long-term memory will stay alive. But when long-term memory is being impaired, it's in, uh, you see, the disorders of brain tissue, chronic uh, developing step by step uh, disorders of the functioning of central nervous system. Like so Alzheimer disease, uh, like uh, atherosclerosis, uh, like chronic alcohol intoxication. Uh, so it should be a generalized brain lesions in order to impair long-term memory and to uh, affect a short-term memory we need acute trauma or acute intoxication that's two different uh, mechanism can explain a clinical culture of the development of the memory disorders and what is the explanation of a long-term memory and uh, the explanation of course why why do people with for example dementia losing their memory with uh, the time of developing of their brain disease. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't much time, but I put you the name, if you wish, uh, of this theory. It's a holonomic brain theory. It was introduced by Carl Pribram and David Bohm. Uh, sorry, Carl Pribram. I didn't put his name, his surname. I will fix it. Uh, and they said that uh, our brain, as you see, is uh, like a big flash car side drive, uh, which generates all the moments a lot of waves. And uh, then we uh, suck information from outside. We also um, change electromagnetic charge of our brain. And this charge has been shared through all the neurons. So if some neurons will die, uh, because of an acute catastrophe, other neurons by, uh, with, uh, will be still functioning and they will uh, keep the necessary information. That's why uh, during even a very serious, after a very serious, uh, for example, brain infarction, a lot of memory, especially which belongs to the long-term memory storage, is being kept well. Now let's go to the classification. Here we have, as you see, two types of memory disorder. Amnesia or amnesia. It's a British one, amnesia, and the paramnesias or paramnesia. Amnesia, it's a loss of memory. As you see, paramnesias is distortion of memory. It's a different things. Uh, loss of memory or memory decay. Here you see uh, in amnesia normal organic psychogenic and in paramnesia distortion of recall or distortion of uh, recognition and uh, we will study them one by one. First of all, amnesia. And you see uh, the definition. It's an inability to recall past experience mm -hmm. and events. Obvious, yes. Hypomnesia means uh, the lowered ability to recall uh, past experience or events. Amnesia means uh, um, means a uh, uh, piece of word which usually indicates the absence of something. Amnesia is from Greek language the memory. We can have a normal memory decay when in two cases, but actually in three cases. Here we can see the two cases. Uh, first of all, then memory is dismissed. Some memories, then are they are dismissed. Then they, we don't need them, we don't use them. They fade and uh, disappear. So 
like in a sorry, like in a trolley bus. Uh, if you don't use this place, somebody will sit there. Second case is uh, then the uh, process of interference of information happens. Interference. Interference. Uh, in the interference process, it happens that two quite similar, uh, slightly indistinguishable, uh, very similar information at the same time try uh, is in the processing of the brain. So brain try to memorize a very similar object or very similar events, words, terms, or something like that. And in this case, brains are confused and uh, no information will stay in your brain. For example, then you learn French and Spanish at the same time. There will be a lot of overlaps with words, with pronunciation, with uh, uh, right, or, or the writing forms or the drum, uh, grandma, because that's a very uh, close language is one with another. They origin mostly from the old Latin language. Okay, so that's an amnesias and normal memory decay. Where else can be a memory decay in a defense mechanisms like a denial? Actually, the denial exists. It's not a normal process, but in a slide forms, uh, then you, uh, I can explain that the denial as that you don't remember, do not want to remember that, what is unpleasant for what can gives you a disturbance, irritation in your, and mostly, of course, in your emotional status. Then you're scared to remember something. Mm -hmm. Again, okay. so that's an amnesia, psychogenic amnesia, amnesia, uh, as you saw, a lot of them, but psychogenic means it combined it from three words, psycho and genic, amnesia. All these type of amnesias occurs as a reaction for the traumatic, psychologically traumatic event. Psychological, not physically traumatic again, uh, event because if it will be physical trauma, so there will be an organic amnesia. We will talk a bit later here. There is no organic damage, but the person loses his memories. And usually we call this type of amnesia as dissociative amnesia. That's a new name. Uh, the uh, previous name is the hysterical amnesia. Now uh, this term hysterical amnesia is not in use. Uh, well, because uh, first of all, it's offensive. Mm, it's offensive uh, qualities. Uh, among a general population. So uh, then people are in, outside from the psychiatric um, office, they say words like a hysterical, you have any hysterical disorders, you have a hysterical status. That usually uh, goes with an offensive context, uh, with a negative uh, judgment about the person. That's why we use dissociative dissociative and the word will help us to understand the, what does it mean dissociate see in dissociative amnesia a person lose his memories about very particular and restricted topics in his past other things from his past he do remember and that's strange and what is more uh, what is a uh, crucial over here it's just uh, that's a uh, Dissociative amnesia happens only due to or after a serious psychological stress. So after that, a person forgets this. But what is the difference? What, what can be, um, what can distinguish, what can uh, help us to understand that this is a dissociative hysterical amnesia and we shouldn't look for uh, uh, disorders of a 
some lesions in the brain. First, you see that a person do not remember particular events, particular traumatic point, as you see. Sorry, uh, uh -huh. a person do not remember particular traumatic point, and uh, then he is able to perform other things, other skills, other types of knowledge uh, to imply all this type of knowledge if they are not uh, in a connection with the traumatic point. Because why? Because if he will use these knowledges, it will help him to retrieve this information. And as we said, dissociative amnesia, it's a condition that a person try to free himself from this memory, to separate himself from this memory. Uh, well, as you see, that the social skills and personality skills are still left. Hmm. Now let me tell you a bit more about, about dissociation. That will be, I hope, in my picture. So, I hope you can see me. Dissociation in chemistry means that two moleculars, yes, uh, natrium and chlor, chlorum, they dissociate, means they spill, slip, uh, spilled splitted sorry for the two parts yes and one exists independently from another the same is with the memory then people use uh, then people use a dissociation mechanism to protect themselves they try to isolate something which is really painful for them from their memory from their conscience from their mind like this to keep it somewhere and let's keep it out of our screen for example this screen is my conscience. And I, I don't want to see some object in my screen, so I will just remove them and I will forget about them. This is dissociative amnesia. The classical example of the dissociative amnesia, uh, it can be anything from the films that's of a beautiful lady found in a tree, in a, in a forest, a handsome man, uh, looks like he was hit in a head and she saved here his life but he don't remember everything he, he don't remember anything which can turns bring him back to the previous life where his what is his address what is his family did he did, did he has a wife uh, had a wife or not so anything he don't remember anything which can bring him to the previous life to the previous suffering Actually, by the, um, by the end of the film, he instantly recognized, uh, recalled all this information, and the uh, you know, film finished. Uh, then he recalled all that, that he was betrayed by his wife, or um, something awful happens with his friend. Usually, his wife betrayed him with his, uh, with his friend, and so obvious. He ran out from this into his uh, dissociative, or oh, psychogenic amnesia. That helps him to run out from his problem. That's the explanation of the psychogenic amnesia. Here you see that psych examples of the psychogenic amnesia, fugue, fugue or wandering state. It's one of the particular cases of the dissociative, uh, uh, dissociative uh, condition of the mind or dissociative okay disorder in fugue a person uh, just run out just go somewhere far from his place from his home uh, sometimes from his house uh, from his town and uh, yeah it's possible that he will travel abroad somewhere in another country and during this period he looks he behaves automatically um, uh, he got an impaired conscience state. Uh, that's why he don't remember how he, how is it happens that he is in another town. And he usually really surprised and confused. That's a wandering state. During this state, he looks like he been obnubilated, so like somebody hit him in the head. That's a figure. Also, we have a cathartic amnesia. It's a repression. 
absolutely denial and the, the people do not want to remember about some events. What can it be? It can be anything uh, which they believe if we, they will, will if they will treat these into the memory, if, if they, they will keep these into the memory, uh, will be painful. So cathartic amnesia, nothing I don't remember. I don't remember anything. That was okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, also where, where we can where, where we can have uh, sci uh, psychogenic amnesia in anxiety and in depression. In anxiety, you can understand right now. For example, in an anxiety, uh, then you're too anxious. Then you have no mood today, and you try to learn something. Then you're too worrying, for example, for your family right now. You know that something happening, and uh, and but you cannot help nobody with that, and uh, uh, you cannot help them. Uh, all your thoughts, all your attention is being attached for something else, but not for your text. That's why people uh, report usually, doctor, I don't remember anything. I try to lose my memory. No, uh, they don't lose in their memory. They just being concentrated on some other topics. And they remember everything about this topic where they were concentrated. Uh, other topics they don't remember. It's it's that's a feature, key feature of anxiety. Anxiety turns our attention only to the uh, stuff which is important for anxiety, but not for ourselves. Same with depression. Depression. It's a sadness. A condition of a mood and the person is concentrating on his sadness, on his suffering, and he don't remember anything well which was happening around him. And organic amnesia due to uh, acute brain disease. Uh, we will turn here after five minutes, okay? Now I learn, now we will make a small break. Organic amnesias. Organic amnesias, again, it's the amnesias due to some kind of brain damage. Psychogenic amnesias is not due to the brain damage. Just to refresh. And so let's move to the uh, types of organic amnesia. Of course, um, it's a bit schematically, it's a bit artificial explanation but it can give you a clinical understanding of underlying processes which lead to different types of organic amnesias. Well, first of all, in acute brain damage, like trauma, my, uh, brain infarctus, brain uh, infarctions, or intoxication, uh, or even epileptic seizure. Epileptic seizure is also kind of brain damage, short but really visible and uh, really valuable if i can use this word so acute trauma person can have two types retrograde amnesia so this amnesia means uh, that person do not remember what happens with him before the injury so for the few, he usually, as I said, don't remember a few minutes before trauma. And sometimes it can be longer. Sometimes he don't remember uh, one hour before trauma. Uh, what can happen? So, uh, for example, you're the doctor, you're the neurosurgeon, and somebody was, uh, uh, and, uh, they deliver somebody with brain injury and after you save him a policeman come and ask who did this to you who uh, cause uh, who make this brain injury for you uh, uh, can you tell me about the, the circumstances what happened person say I don't remember I don't I do remember that I left my home and I do remember um, how I was walking in a pedestrian manner uh, to walk 
and that's it. And then I remember then I woke up in a hospital and I have now my wallet, I lose my money, etc. So it's a retrograde amnesia. Anterograde amnesia. Uh, so that's an amnesia of the events which happens after after injury. When it can happen, as you see in accidents and in a blackouts, or, uh, or, or that person was a drunk too much, or then was an intoxication. Or, for example, after in a fever, just a hyperthermia, 41, 40 Celsius degrees, a person can fall into unconscious state. And uh, time after time, he will go out from this condition, but he don't remember what was going on after his temperature become too hot. Um, to uh, explain you in a uh, in a picture, of, for example, uh, that's from Latin. We have an injury in this timeline. That's a timeline. Here, there is an injury. Retrograde amnesia means uh, from uh, Latin retro back. So in a back uh, before the injury, in, we move here in the timeline and backwards in the timeline. We don't remember, a person don't remember what happens before. Who uh, hit him? And anterograde amnesia means event is here and the person do not remember what happens after that. For example, after injury, you treated him, uh, you asked him, he, you make um, uh, some surgery uh, uh, with his wounds or you, well, you um, put a bandage or something like that. So, so you, he saw you, he speak with you, he recognize you, but next day you come into the a word to check him for um, check up general and the patient tell you, you know, hello and it looks like he don't recognize you and if you ask him do you recognize me he tell no uh, we never met before that's an anterograde condition mm -hmm. it will be easy for you to remember and i hope no i hope i'm sure that you will meet this kind of people in your practice so let's move further. Organic amnesia, then subacute brain disease. We have acute, subacute, and chronic condition. In subacute brain disease, as you see, it's a thiamine deficiency in alcohol abuse, cerebral vascular disease, multiple sclerosis, a hand injury, electric and muscle treatment. So all these events can cause so-called subacute damages, which uh, developed, uh, which uh, continue to develop and evolutionize in a covert manner. So we don't see this obviously, but damage is uh, ongoing and the process is developed. And here, possible Corsica syndrome. You see, it's an amnestic state. The person is unable to record or memorize current events, as well as recent events, means 10 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago. Well, right now, his short-term memory, as you remember, is switched off, almost switched off. So he don't remember what's going on, and uh, he, he remember what's going on right now, together with me, but if you will leave him for half of a minute and turns back, he will again, you will again need to introduce yourself because he's not going to re, uh, recognize you. No information is being fixed right now. All the information from the past events before these, the beginning of this Corsican syndrome, all the, this information is safe. He can retrieve it. No problem, but he cannot uh, retrieve the information which happens five minutes ago. So he don't remember how it happens that he is in the hospital. Uh, he can leave a, a hospital. Uh, he can leave a hospital ward, and then he don't know where he come from. 
uh, he can put something like money uh, in a pocket of a, I don't know, of a dress or of a coat. Uh, but then he don't remember what he put it in. He, he thinks that somebody stole me. So actually people do recognize, do re realize that uh, they cannot fix any information anymore. And they're really in a big shock. They're in a panic. Uh, the constant, the constant, the always uh, friend and the sister of the Kopitskov syndrome. It's a panic, panic of the patient, because he absolutely sure that he lost his mind. He become crazy, unconscious. Again, uh, the dosage of the thiamine will treat this condition quite well and they will recover mm -hmm. uh, now move on and next time organic amnesia uh, here if we in case of a chronic brain disease in case of a chronic brain disease like uh, Alzheimer disease, body levy, the body levy dementia, uh, cerebral vascular disorder, especially um, atherosclerosis, chronic hypertension, um, chronic again, chronic intoxication from any agents, but mostly substances, and mostly or most of them, it's an alcohol or uh, clue glue uh, liquid, so liquid which contain uh, acetone or any others uh, chemical substances which people breathe in chronically they breathe in so in this case there is a day by day losing uh, and dying of the highly developed neurons so we have a progressive amnesia memory decayed from so and people uh, forget the memory, uh, forget the information or memory uh, from the previous event. Uh, then uh, the destruction of memory develops in a direction towards the childhood. They first they don't remember recent event. They then they don't remember what happens a few months ago, a few years ago, and by the end, by the end of the development of this progressive amnesia. Uh -huh. They don't remember even their childhood and they forget the last, they forget it's their name. Here we have a special law, a special feature of organic amnesia. Uh, it's a progression of the memory losing. We call it reborn law of memory regression. As I said, what was today, then they don't forget what was a few weeks ago month few years five years what was in their youth and then uh, they forget their childhood and that's it at the timeline progressive amnesia it continues the development and we do understand because of the continuous and gradual disappearing of anatomical basis for the long term memory i hope you remember holonomic theory of memory by by carl p p Pribram. Paramnesias. Paramnesias, it's a distortions of memory. Means memory exists, but they are distorted. They are, let's say so, perverted. They've been changed. And below you see the types. Distortion of recall, cryptamnesia, false memories, uh, pseudologia, confabulation, and distortion of recognition. Uh, means Exhaustive memory, uh, the memory which should not exist. Let's start. False memory. False memory. Uh, uh, that's a memories which hadn't occur uh, events in uh, these in the life of the person. And individual invent them, first of all, introduce them, and then he believe in that. False memory. False memory very often in a schizophrenia, very often in a um, 
in a delusional disorder. Uh, false memory also can occur in a brain damage, in organic brain damage. For example, in delusional disorder, a person uh, actually never, um, uh, do not remember for a, before a particular time, he don't remember anything about his early childhood, but then he instantly discover or instantly have um, had a uh, acquire, if I can say so, an insight that he is a child of the parents of another parents. So these parents is not my parents. And uh, my parents actually is a noble family. It's a queen, king family. And I'm not from here. I don't belong here for this family because I differ. And I feel that my parents is not my parents. What happens then? He tried to memorize. He, he tried to remember. He, oh, he traveled for his uh, early memories. And uh, instantly he, he found that, yes, he remember that in his family, then he was too young, uh, then he wasn't able to walk, he was in his uh, child bed, and he remember uh, like somebody came into their family, into their, into their house, and these, he couldn't saw his man, but he only um, remember a very a precious ring at the hand of this person, and yes, that's a proof, that's that was my uncle, I think, and, and he came just to give money for my parents or to make a deal with my parents that they will keep me, so that they will stay, leave me uh, and keep me in their family and they will pretend that I'm their son. And uh, well, that's it. That's my memories. Actually, it's a false in the person, uh, there wasn't any accident, but patients think that events had happened. That's a false memory. We also call them confabulation. No. Just false memory, no, not to confuse you. Cryptomnesia, crypta from Greek, hidden. So a person has a memories, but the source of these memories is hidden. Is it happens with him, or maybe war, it, it was happened in a film, movie, book, but he think that it happens with him. All the information, uh, scenario, plots, uh, he will tell you the story, very interesting story about his life, but you will be suspicious, and um, then you will remember the film from which he took this information. So these people you know, do not remember the source of these memories. When can it happen? Uh, usually it can happen in a person who are childish, who, um, who full of a very um, vivid uh, fantasies, who usually fantasize and they fantasize so intensively, they uh, been, uh, uh, they involve themselves, uh, they are, uh, throw themselves with these memories so mm, so they start to believe in that, that that's true uh, they can start one story they will be so excited with that they will be so uh, attached to that story that they start to believe in that by themselves because their life they think that their life their usual life true life is boring that calls a cryptomnesia or sometimes it happens in a brain damage, of course. Confabulation, as you see, it's uh, just a falsification of memory uh, occurs, uh, which occurs at, uh, the, to replace the gaps in the memory, to fulfill in the gaps in the memory. Yes, usually it happens with the people who get a brain damage. And most common case of uh, these type, most common types, of this is the embarrassed type. Then a patient try to fulfill in the gaps. Usually it looks like a true. For example, a patient uh, uh, tell you yesterday, 
Yesterday I visited my uh, cardiologist uh, and that's it. And he prescribed me some pills and uh, I left him and go home. Yes, you know that he attended a cardiologist, but that wasn't yesterday because you don't remember what happened yesterday. It was happening, uh, it, it happened, it had happened uh, two weeks before, but he don't remember that. And in order to fulfill this gap, he put the fantastic type also happens. And uh, mm, of course, people replace the gaps in the memory, not by a true like events. They invent something fantastic. That's also uh, not, a, not a good prognosis because this person uh, starts to, looks like he starts to not to control uh, his, of course not he to, to control his uh, memory because it's impossible, but he also starts to suffering from the uh, emotion which accompany, uh, which produce grandiosity. So increase it emotional status, increase it mood like an, in a mania. In many of these guys full of fantasies and they believe in that. Pseudologia. Pseudologia, uh, you see, fluent, uh, fluent lie. A completely in, uh, invented story of the person and as I told you, this person are childish. They believe in this story. They absolutely fool in this story completely with that. And they believe in that. And people, other people usually believe that. Uh, and uh, the problem is, uh, then they turn back. Then uh, they finish their story. They usually uh, can have uh, problems because they was so, uh, their story was so, looks like a true that other people believe them they able to they were able to persuade that this is true and then usually they promise something uh, accordingly with their story and the problem is that uh, they are call it uh, by other people to the response for their promises and nothing happens uh, i haven't met a lot of met a lot of cases with pseudologia but uh, I, I do remember one guy, he was in our school, he was older than me, and uh, there was a time in our country that it was very fashionable to have a friends in the criminal spheres, so he was telling uh, every, for, uh, for everybody that he is a very important person in the criminal uh, area, and um, he also promised a lot of protection for all the people. And after that, he turns back, uh, he could do nothing, but people was coming and was asking, please help us, or uh, you promised us. He also um, presented himself as a very rich man, and uh, he promised to give some loans, and people was coming to ask the money and to, for him to, complete, to fulfill his obligations sometimes. There's a pseudology of Munhausen syndrome, one of the types, but actually very harmful types. In, in Munhausen syndrome, you see, there are a variant psychological, it's a psychological line, variants of a line, pathological line, in which person believe, uh, no, not a belief, pretend that he has some kind of uh, illness, but he know that that is not a true illness. And he give you the story about his illness. He asks you to make a test, to examine him, well, to spend your attention for them. That's the main thing that they actually they need in their life uh, to have an attention. And for that, in order for attain the attention from you, they even can uh, produce some self-harming so they can have self-harming uh, activities, like to swallow needle or to swallow some poisonous substance in order to have a real symptoms of real disease. So they are ready to risk their life, but only to get an attention from you, care from you. Well, the simple explanation, one of the simplest explanations that they hadn't have 
this inform uh, 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 this kind of attention or help from the society in their early childhood. So they got a real deficiency of that. Now, a distortion of uh, recognition. And here we have hyper amnesia, or it will be more correct to call it hypermnesia, or hypermnesia, because a means uh, absence, or means contradiction, means, uh, no, so hypermnesia is uh, too strong, too intensive, registration, retention, and recall. So people suffer from their memories, from the quality, from the high intensity of their memories, as you see 9-11. Yeah, what happens in this case? A big catastrophe in the United States. Or it can be not only 9-11. Each person which, who passed through the threatening condition, he remember this condition very well. And this condition, too often being uh, retrieved from the memory, they just go by themselves, they enter into the memory, into the conscious by themselves, and we call this phenomena that memories attack person without his will as a flashback. As you see, it's a sudden intrusive memories, and also they associate it. Uh, of, uh, what is the problem with them is that they associate it with emotional, negative emotional experiences. And uh, so, person sits still, do nothing, and in this moment, traumatic events come into the into his memory and cause him to feel worry, anxiety, fear, maybe even run, maybe even protect himself. So he is being constantly tense. He is in shock. He is frightened. That's it. So it's a suffering. Or in a hypomania, well, people not suffer. People do not suffer from hypermnesia. So in hypermania, they remember a lot of stuff. Maybe their relatives will suffer from hypermnesia because uh, in hypermanic people will remember them. They are, for example, critics if relatives try to stop him. And he will remember all this stuff and he will use that in order to initiate an argument with them. Wait a bit. Mm -hmm. Hypermnesia and déjà vu. Déjà vu in French. It's a not a disturbance memory, but uh, it's a, that's a definition. It's a feeling that you experience a current event, that you had experienced a current event in the past. But mm, sorry for the quality of the of my painting. Let's fix it. I, uh, it's, a, it's having an experience of a current event as it was in the past. Also, there is no basis for that. Why is that happens? Well, first of all, one of the uh, most common explanations is our uh, prognostic function of, of the mind or of the conscience of the brain. We are made so uh, by the nature, so uh, we got a very important function in our brain to make prognosis, to dream about future, to make prognosis of the future. Without this function, we couldn't make any complete any success because any successful activity require a step-by-step -step activity and it, this require exact and concrete plan. Well, everyone may have a dream. We have our theories, we have our expectation from the future. And this expectation is nothing, just a schema, just a skeleton, not exact object, not exact words are installed. You just have a schema, approximate schema. And then something happens with you. Oh, you feel that yeah, you used to thought about that. For example, you can just think that uh, tomorrow uh, your friend will just talk to you about, I don't know, Barbie toys. 
and he I don't know anything and, and he and he will tell you that yes that he liked them also as well as you mm -hmm. that's nice because nobody that's nice and then it happens it looks for you like you have been experiencing them before that's a deja okay so well looks like that's it for today uh now people i will give you a time or a chance i will turn on the sound to for you to give me a question and then i will tell you goodbye for today so any question no sir it's it's in the others okay there's no question so um the then lecture will is over and um see you next time at the lecture and i will upload this video at the general whatsapp group. okay